Let's take a look at a fun maximum likelihood estimation problem. So this problem involves a random sample from the uniform distribution defined over theta to theta plus one. And the goal here is to find the maximum likelihood estimator for theta. Now the procedure that we've described in class says that we should find first the PDF and then the joint PDF and from there a likelihood function which is very easy to get from the joint PDF and then we should maximize the likelihood function uh, over the parameter space. So let's start with the PDF for any individual x in the sample. Uh, the variable will be x and the parameter is theta. Now this PDF should be 1 over um, what we would call b minus a. So b is theta plus 1 and a is just theta so we'll just be left with uh, a 1 there. And then times the indicator function from theta to theta plus 1. And of course this is just equal to that indicator function because the first term is 1 so we don't need to write it. So this is the marginal PDF and if we want the joint PDF my notation will be f. Now x is a vector. It's a vector of length n. Theta is still a single parameter. Uh, because of independence, right, because we have uh, an IID sample, the independence part allows us to multiply the marginal PDFs together. So I'll multiply uh, from i equals 1 up to n of the indicator over theta to theta plus 1 and our variable is xi. So this is our joint PDF. Now to get the likelihood function what we really want to do is take the joint PDF and write it as a function of theta rather than as a function of x. So what we'd like to do is have a theta here, right, so that it's really a proper function of theta and maybe have something to do with uh, x here. So we just have to reason about this joint PDF a little bit. The joint PDF uh, tells us that basically xi is greater than theta for all xi and uh, xi is less than theta plus 1. So yeah, this is true for all i in 1 up to n. And so what we're going to do is convert this claim here into a claim about an order statistic, well two order statistics, namely the max and the min. So this claim here, if xi for every i is greater than theta, then that must mean that the minimum is greater than theta. So this is equivalent to the order statistic, the minimum, being greater than theta. And also, if we look at this inequality, if every one of the xi's is less than theta plus 1, then that means the max must be less than uh, theta plus 1. So the max less than theta plus 1. And combining these together, we'll see that um, theta will be between the max minus 1 and the minimum. 
So that means theta will be will will not go beyond the minimum value. Uh, so it's going to be less than the minimum value, and it will be greater than uh, the max plus one. And from there, we can write down the likelihood function. So the likelihood function, it's a function of theta now. It's an indicator over uh, the max minus one and the minimum, and it's a function of theta. So if we plot this, we'll get a good sense of, of what the, the maximum likelihood estimator is. And by me saying the maximum likelihood estimator, I'm, I'm being a little bit sloppy. It's actually, uh, there are infinitely many values. So if we plot this likelihood function, uh, you know, we'll have, let me get rid of this um, slide number down here so that um, we don't get confused. Say we have our max minus one here and our minimum here. This indicator function says that for theta between the max minus one and the min, we have one. So that's our likelihood function and everywhere else the likelihood function is zero, right? Of course, this is a theta axis. So the only place where the likelihood is not zero is between these two bounds, but between those two bounds, it's constant. It's the same. And that tells us that theta hat ML, the maximum likelihood estimator, is any value uh, in the interval max minus one to the min. So in this case, the maximum likelihood estimator is not unique. There are infinitely many possible values that would um, you know, count as the maximum likelihood estimator. And this is a really interesting case because if you think back to others that we looked at in class, for example, the maximum likelihood estimator of the probability of success for a series of Bernoulli trials, the maximum likelihood estimator was unique. It was X bar. So in some cases, the maximum likelihood estimator gives us a unique answer. And in some cases, it's not a unique answer. And there are some underlying properties that would allow us to deduce when we get a unique answer versus a, a non-unique answer. And we'll discuss some of these properties briefly in class. So for now, um, hopefully this just gave you more practice with maximum likelihood estimation. And it uh, illustrated the fact that the MLA does not need to be unique.